Hello, today we're going to be talking about expressions and variables. Um, it's just sort of an introductory lesson, really something that you're going to get into more in fifth grade that's really good for you to have exposure to this year. So we're going to be learning these two new words today and we're going to be going over what they really mean. So an expression, often if you think like, oh, well, that's a funny expression. It's like a way of saying something. Well, a mathematical expression is actually really similar. It's a way of saying what numbers mean. So if I showed you this, and I asked you what you thought that meant, most of you would probably come up with, well, those are 10 blocks. So 10, 20, 30. 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36. You'd probably come up with that. That's not really an expression. An expression wants to say something about this number 36. So we wanna have more to it than that. So now I'm gonna say to you, okay, I have 36 something. I'm gonna tell you that they are marbles. And then I'm gonna tell you that they are all in bags and there's equal amount in each bags. And I'm going in each bag. I'm going to ask you to write an expression about that. Would you be able to do that now? So I want you to kind of think about that now. So something with 36, there's 36 all together. So I want you to just take a second to think time. They're divided. Do we have enough information? What if I told you that there are six bags? that they're divided equally into. Six bags. How many are in each bag? Now do I have an expression, right? Because I'm saying something about this number, but I also have one of these. What is my variable? My variable is my unknown. It could be X. It could be M for marbles. It can really be whatever the, the, which letter you use really is irrelevant and doesn't matter. What's important to understand is that the number represents our unknown. So now we have an expression to go with these figures. We said something about the number. And then we also have a variable that we can solve for in this X. So that's what those two words mean. Now we're gonna move on and explore that a little bit further. So now we're going to actually be solving for some of these unknown variables. The first one I made pretty simple. If you just think of the C as a blank, so five plus blank equals eight. So my C would equal whatever would go into this blank. Again, our variable just means our unknown, our blank. So five plus what equals eight? Well, five plus three equals eight, so C must equal three. Now here I'm gonna show you, and this is really an algebraic expression, when I have two, uh, my number and my variable right next to each other, what that really means is that they're being multiplied. This is why. If I had written eight times A, that would be confusing, right? Because you're like, wait, eight X? Is X my variable? So when we do expressions, we actually really do not use our multiplication symbol because it is a little bit confusing to have letters and X's floating around. So there's an invisible multiplication symbol if they're right next to each other like that. You might also see a dot that sometimes gets used, which also means multiplication. Either way, multiplication. So now I have eight A or eight times A or eight A's equals 16. So what do I need to do to figure that out? What's my unknown? Eight times blank equals 16 would be another way to think about it. So I know that eight times two equals 16. So A must equal two. Now down here, I have a subtraction. So 10 minus X equals five. 10 minus what equals five? If I work backwards, five plus five equals 10. And I know that 10 minus five equals five. So X equals five. Okay, we're gonna take it a step further now. So just hang in there with me. Okay, so before we were looking at expressions where it was relatively simple to say, well, that's a blank and I'm gonna fill in the blank. 
There are times, however, where we have more than one thing going on on one side of our equation and it makes it a little bit harder to just kind of fill in a blank. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna solve for X and we're gonna have a new mission. The mission is to get it alone. It means the variable. So we need to get the X by itself because if I have X equals blank, then I know what X is, right? How am I gonna get it alone? This is super important, so make sure you're paying attention. I have to use something called an inverse operation. Inverse means opposite. Okay, inverse means opposite. And that's because I want to get this X by itself. So I want the six to go away and I want the three to go away. Well, how do you get rid of a six? You subtract a six, right? You do the opposite. This is a six. I want to get rid of it. I want minus six. But whatever you do to one side of the equation, you also have to do to the other side of the equation. So if I take six away on this side and I still want it to be equal, right? That means I have to balance it's like a scale. If I have a scale that's balanced right now, right now this equation is balanced. It is equal. If I take away six on one side, oh, I'm not equal anymore. I have to take away six on the other side too and then I'll be equal again. So I'm gonna take away six, and I'm gonna take away six. Now I need to start working on a new line over here because I don't wanna get confused, okay? Six minus six is nothing, so that goes away. Now I just have x minus three equals 12 minus six is six. You with me so far? So I wanted to get rid of the six, so I took it away, but I also had to take it away on the other side too. Now my equation is still balanced. That's called balancing my equation, okay? Now I have x minus three equals six. Is x by itself yet? Not yet. So now if I have minus three, what's the opposite of subtraction? Addition. So right now three is being taken away. So I want to give three back. And what I do to one side, I also have to do to the other side. And again, so that I don't get confused, I'm gonna start a new line here where I kind of rewrite my newly balanced equation. My three and my three went away, and now I have x equals six plus three, nine. And I have my answer. Now what I am gonna wanna do is I'm gonna wanna check my work. So I'm gonna wanna go back up to my original equation, which is up here. And I'm gonna rewrite it down here. Six plus nine minus three equals 12. And I wanna check it. So working left to right, six plus nine is 15 minus three is 12. Does it work? It works. So again, I just did, I took one step at a time. First I dealt with the six and then I rebalanced my equation. Then I dealt with the three, and then that gave me my answer. So get a piece of, uh, piece of paper and a pencil or a little whiteboard if you have one. I want you to work through the next one with me. I know this is kind of new. I want you to work through the next one with me and see if you can get it. All right, so write this one down if you have a way to write it down. We have 10 plus X minus seven equals 21. All right, so I need, I, it doesn't really matter which number I start with. Actually, I could start with either one, whatever you feel is a little bit easier for you to do. So you could either deal with the 10 or the seven, because remember, we wanna get the X by itself. That means we have to get rid of the 10 and this, what's really a negative seven or minus seven, okay? So what am I gonna do first? I'm gonna take 10 away from both sides. Remember, I need to keep it balanced. Right now it is equal. If I take 10 away from one side, I need to also take it away from the other side so that they're equal. So I'm gonna write minus 10, write it with me if you're writing along, minus 10 and minus 10. Okay, so now I've dealt with my 10, I got rid of it, right? Now I'm gonna rewrite my equation and my new balanced equation down on the next line. These cross out because 10 minus 10 is zero. My plus is just kind of doesn't really need to be rewritten. So now I have X minus seven equals, I have a little bit of math to do here, 21 minus 10 equals 11. 
You with me? Okay, awesome. All right, now I have a number, another number to deal with. So now I need to get the X and again, he's not alone yet. Now I need to deal with this seven. I need to use my inverse operation. So since this is minus seven, I'm gonna do plus seven and plus seven. And then I'm going to rewrite my balanced equation. I can put a slash right through those sevens because seven neg negative seven plus seven is zero. And x equals 11 plus 7, which is 18. So now I have, if I want to check it, I can plug my 18 in here. So here I'll check my equation over here. 10 plus 18 minus 7, does it equal 21? 10 plus 18 is 28 minus seven is 21 and it works. So I'm not gonna give you anything that involves um, multiplication or division right now because that sort of complicates things a little bit. We're gonna stick just with addition and subtraction with isolating these X's. I know that some of you, especially when you get to this point, are going to be able to do this in your head and you're gonna be like, mm, but Miss Reeves, I can do X minus seven equals 11 and I can figure out X in my head. I get that. However, I want you to get in the practice of rewriting and balancing your equations because when you get into um, fifth grade and especially in middle school, trust me, because Alex is in eighth grade, he did it in sixth grade, seventh grade, and eighth grade, doesn't go away. You're gonna have longer equations that you need to balance. So this will get you into the practice of rewriting and balancing and rewriting and balancing. We're just gonna keep practicing that. So go give it a shot and come visit me in Google Hangouts if you have any questions. Bye.